the people that are not willing to accept, not accept no matter how much evidence they come across. So just, you know, as, as, a, as a reference to that, that the guy was just talking about where he was saying that Abraham he was mentioning something about Abraham, so I thought I'd let you know that in the in the Old Testament, which he'll they'll probably uh, ignore as uh, as as legitimate because they'll think that the Bible has been corrupted. The the Abraham spoke to three men and and referred to them as one and said to them, Lord, as he as he bowed to them and he fed he went and told his wife to to prepare some food because he was and because he was going to feed them and so all he fed all three of them and he referred to them as one and he said to them lord so if abraham did that and they were they were already walking the earth back then and it was three of them, then there's no other, there's no, there's no other explanation other than the fact that it was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. That is the, the most straightforward answer that you can possibly find is in Genesis chapter 18, when God saw three men beneath the tree and refer to them as as God and refer to them as singular and call them Lord and he fed them so they also ate food here on earth with Abraham and so these are the these are the characteristics of who God is you know he's three people he's and and every time I never hear anybody say, well, read Genesis 18, but it's so, you know, out in the open, it's, it's right there, um, the first four verses of Genesis chapter 18. So, you know, I will keep listening to this uh, Speaker's Corner in uh, England, I think. evidence. The other side of it is there's another case study where there was a man who was a teacher in an English school who accidentally, well, he showed an example of something that could be considered blasphemous towards Islam. He showed uh, an image of Muhammad and it was purely for the purpose of uh, demonstrating what that might look like. And it wasn't a horribly offensive image, it just happened to be a depiction of Muhammad. He ended up getting death threats from many uh, prominent people in the community who had heard about this. Uh, they weren't happy that their sons and daughters who attended the school had gone to a class where uh, blasphemy was shown in some form, and the guy had to go into hiding. So you can see just how difficult of a situation this is. We have activist groups on both sides that fundamentally don't agree with each other, that don't work together and never will work together. But we don't, <laughs> the government isn't willing to, to actually say to both of these groups, look, you can't do this. You can't threaten, you can't, um, you can't teach inappropriate things in schools, you can't do any of this. The government is largely rather passive here in the UK. Um, that's a very sad thing, but it is the truth. Except towards Christians. Oh yeah, Christian, well, Christians are um, paradoxically seen as sort of old, traditional, bigoted, um, you know, that's kind of how Christians are perceived. Not even real, in a sense, because there are people I've seen who say, wait, Christians are still real. Like, just there are some areas of the UK that are so secular that people have brought up in a secular school, a secular environment, never went to church, never even known a Christian. So when they encounter one, it's kind of a shock. Like, oh, you actually, you're a Christian and you take it seriously. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so you should, you should come out of that's kind of the level we're at in, in the UK. And uh, probably many other countries, probably in Europe at least, have some similar stories, I imagine. Wow. 
Well, um, I'm curious, at Speaker's Corner, are they still floating around the idea that the Quran's been perfectly preserved, every line, every, yeah. every mark, every... Oh, absolutely. I mean, 